All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's been a couple of days here, and the Bears loss is still as crazy as it was when it happened live, 38-20 to at home against rival the Green Bay Packers. <sighs> it's tough, man. I think I've got a couple of comments right out of the gate. I think this loss would be a lot more understandable, and it wouldn't be as big of a deal if it wasn't the Green Bay Packers, and if it especially wasn't Jordan Love's first game post Aaron Rodgers era. Number two, it's week one. It's literally week one. And if the Chicago Bears bounce back against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this upcoming week, well, then they're back on track. And the momentum is heading into your favor. It's an 18 week season. You play 17 regular season games. We know the Bears won three games. The Bears won three games last season. I'm not expecting a 13 and four season, a 14 and three season. They're going to make mistakes. And that's what we're unfortunately going to talk about in today's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. I do post daily Bears content over here on Chicago Bears Daily. So yeah, appreciate your guys' support. Um, a couple of things, you know, Justin Fields, 24-37, one touchdown, one interception, 216 passing yards. He did rush only nine times for 59 yards. Uh, you know, the Packers game plan immediately was to make Justin Fields beat you with his arm. And I can't really get a couple of things. It, there's a couple of things that seem clear here. Justin Fields doesn't feel fully comfortable. I don't know if that's because of offensive coordinator Luke Getze. I don't know if that's because of the offensive line injuries. Like, Whitehair has no business, or sorry, Lucas Patrick has no business, like, playing. Uh, so the Tevin Jenkins injury really does suck, which would make me think Justin Fields doesn't fully trust his offensive line. And then it, it's just weird because Justin, you need to let Justin Fields loose. I saw a tweet earlier today and I really liked, you know, the comparison was basically like Lamar Jackson. They're not trying to make Lamar Jackson into Dan Marino. So why are you going to make Jordan Love, you know, into like a, some pocket passer? You know, Justin Fields is great on his legs. He's one of the best rushers at his position in the National Football League. Now, we don't want Justin Fields running the ball 20 plus times. We want him to you know, be able to throw in the pocket. But if his skill is running on the move and the offensive line's skill set is also helping him run on the move, let him run. Let the dude run. Let the dude loose. I don't know if this is because Getze doesn't really like the off or doesn't trust the offensive line. If Justin Fields doesn't trust the offensive line, it seems like, you know, the guys right now, mainly probably due to the Tevin Jenkins injury, aren't fully trusting into their system. Now, one good thing with the offensive line is Darnell Wright was in one-on-one -on -one blocking situations with no help 27 times on Sunday. He allowed three pressures and no sacks, and for a rookie in his first ever NFL game, that is extremely impressive. Now, finally, to talk about the offense here, one thing, Rashawn Johnson looks like the dude. You know, Khalil Herbert didn't have a great game. Dante Foreman didn't have a great game. But that Packers rush defense is literally, it's legit, man. It's a legit defense. So I'm not going to jump the gun and say, you know, oh, Khalil Herbert doesn't need to be the starter and, you know, start Rashawn Johnson. But he had a great game in his first ever NFL game. Five carries, 20 yards, and a touchdown. Six catches for 35 yards. Demonstrated all of his versatility that we saw at Texas last year that was overshadowed from Bajan Robinson. The bad thing with the offense was Chase Claypool. You know, I'm sure you guys have seen it on Twitter. There are, you know, just it feels like play after play after play after play where Chase Claypool is just there's no energy. There's no effort. If you guys remember the report this past summer, there were guys within the, the Bears management room, the coaching staff management that didn't like Chase Claypool's offseason workouts and his program and how he handled himself weight wise, physicality wise in the offseason. Well, it showed on the field today, immediately. He had two targets and a whopping zero catches for zero yards. Uh, I'll give him a month. If he is still like this at the trade deadline, I would 100,000% cut him loose. Um, try and trade him. I don't really know what the Bears can... I mean, he's still a young former second round draft pick. If he's healthy... The energy, though, uh, the effort, it seems, you know, given up that second round pick that turned up to be what Joey Porter Jr. Uh, it certainly doesn't look great right now. Speaking of the secondary, uh, Jaquan Brisker, you know, 
He said he wished that fans have their back and not boo early in games. I was at the game. I didn't really hear, maybe it was different on the broadcast. I didn't hear many boos in the first half. The boos like really rallied on in the second half when they pretty much, you know, technically the second half, the, the Packers scored 28 points and the Bears scored 14 points. But, you know, if you watch that game, that last touchdown, you know, as the game pretty much was coming down to a close, uh, the final score was essentially 38 to 14. In the second half, the Bears got outscored 28 to 8, just about. That's when the booze started coming in. I mean, a, a large majority of Bears fans left at, you know, especially after Quay Walker's pick six, but there were that, that's pretty much when a lot of Bears fans left. One thing I'll say about it is I love Jaquan Brisker, I love kind of his mentality. Yo, know, I like it. Um, I do think you have to back it up. I can't remember the last time the Bears actually beat the Packers. I believe it was 2018. I think he was 19 at that time. It was five years ago. Um, I love his mentality. I love his attitude. But at the same time, we got to start seeing results. Jaquan Brisker, I think, is an extremely talented player. I think he had a good game, seven total tackles. He had a pass deflection. Uh, I like the mindset, but we got to see the results. Yeah, you're going to get booed because you just got blown out at home with a lot of hype and a lot of offseason moves. We also offensively, one quick thing, we got to see more DJ Moore. DJ Moore had two targets. I mean, it, he had two targets. He had two catches for 25 yards. I remember looking at my buddy and being like, Where, where's DJ Moore? Where's DJ Moore? A good thing with DJ Moore is even though he was only targeted twice, his energy, his effort was as high as it possibly could be. He left everything out on the field. He's a good leader. He's a good role model. He's a team captain. I liked the way he carried himself. You know, there's that clip. I think it's like the third quarter where Justin Fields and DJ Moore, they look, you know, just flabbergasted. And I mean, I don't really know what else they were going to be because it was truly a crazy game. I don't think anybody really anticipated. I mean, it's not crazy that the Packers beat the Bears, but I don't think anybody really expected this domination in the second half. You know, at halftime, it was 10 to 6, Green Bay. The Bears had gotten down into the red zone a couple of times. They had orchestrated a couple of nice drives. Then once they got closer into the red zone, they just couldn't get the job done. They couldn't put touchdowns up on the board. They had to settle with field goals. So it was like 10 to 6 at halftime. They had them. You know, they had them. They weren't losing the game by pff, one possession game. And uh, yeah, that second half was, it was brutal. So, you know, there's a lot to dissect, uh, but it is week one. So I want to be calm, cool, calm, collected, and just, <laughs> you got to be Tampa, man. Tampa's coming off a really impressive road victory against the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> got to score. And you got to score early. I need the Chicago Bears in week two to score a touchdown on their first drive, at least three points. I need points on the first drive of the game. Whenever the offense steps out onto the field, I need points on the board immediately because they got to beat the Buccaneers. All right. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily Bears content. As always, guys, let me know what you're thinking down below. Unfortunately, I am going to ask for a team grade and uh, I can't imagine they're going to be that great. So give me your team grade. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time.